Have you seen Marvin Harrison Jr. at camp? Holy, holy, holy. This kid is something else. I mean, and he's doing things on the field that they haven't had there since Larry Fitz left. Go on, everyone. Bear Podcast NFL Preview is back for another week, another episode with myself, Bear, Chris Felica, Jeff Schwartz. My co-host is here, as always, Sammy P. and Will will join us again in the gambling group chat. And Jeff, I'd love to get your perspective on this as someone who has played probably in far too many preseason games that you'd ever want to admit to or maybe ever thought you would. Uh, unders have just been the way to go in terms of attacking and betting these games. I mean, there there have been teams that have absolutely just shown that they are in no rush at all or no desire at all to actually yeah. play anyone or care about these games. So I guess my question to you is, <clears throat> is, is twofold. Are we going to see numbers this week that are so low that we have to consider playing over or in this third and final preseason game, are we going to see teams yeah. basically approaching these games as just basically the clock can't run fast enough, just get our guys out of there. I mean, obviously the guys who are playing are probably going to be guys who aren't going to make the team right. or be practice squad guys, but are, are we basically going to see teams so vanilla with their game plans that this is going to be another week where you can't set these totals low enough? The totals are not any different than last week. There's 35 and a half. There's 34 and a half. There's 33 and a half. There's a 30 and a half. Um, you know, there, there's some very, very low ones. But um, the bear, the thing that has been surprising to me in this preseason is is the the gap, the gulf between the teams that sort of care at all about the preseason and the teams that don't. I mean, there are teams like the Kansas City Chiefs that come out and game plan and start their ones. Pittsburgh, same thing, even though we might disagree with how they played, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, you know, like they're trying, they're game playing, they're trying to present their stars out there like a regular season game. Then you have other teams that don't even play their first or second quarterback. And you watch those games, and there's absolutely nothing to take away. They're playing third-string players, maybe second-stringers at certain positions, and the quarterback play is so atrocious that it's not even worth watching Bear. The, the Panthers and Jets, okay, the Panthers are down 9, 15 to 6, under two minutes left. You know, it's a preseason game. You figure that they want their third-string quarterback, Plummer, the third-string players, to get a little bit of two-minute drilling, right, to be able to practice the mechanics of going down the field. No. They're, 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 no. They now, the crazy part is they ran the football. Did you go to that game? I did not. I'm sorry. I did not go to that game. Um as you're in the college podcast, my son is big, big into fishing now. So he was out of town with my wife. So luckily I was able to sit at home and, and just watch it um, on my third screen there. But nonetheless, like they scored to end the game on two rushing plays in a row because Brooks broke some long rushes. But my point is like, they didn't care. The Jets didn't care. The Falcons haven't cared. The Packers haven't cared. All these teams, the Rams have not played either of their two quarterbacks. Bear, I've never seen it this, this wide of a gap between teams that care and teams that don't, even teams that didn't care, sort of tried a little bit. It feels like this year they're not trying at all. So I just don't know how you wager on week three of the preseason. I know that you're here to hear some insights on that, but most stars <laughs> are not playing. Most second-string quarterbacks aren't going to play. I can't handicap to you, um, you know, two teams playing third-string quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I was listening to – uh, Vison earlier today, and I, I know Gil Alexander had uh, Drew Densick on, and they Drew Drew's basically said the same thing because I have not made a week three preseason bet, and I don't plan to make a week three preseason bet. And again, all because these games are going to be played does not mean that you have to wager on them. Now, look, it may be if you're watching, if you happen to be watching one of these games, and you see that there's clearly a team that is has zero desire, zero motivation to play, or or score or move the ball, I and mean, maybe you can hop in uh, whoever's dealing live, you could potentially do that. But, uh, yeah, there, there's no need to make a bet just because uh, they're, they're posting numbers on these preseason games uh, pre-flop, that's for sure. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I, geez, if you wagered a live preseason game, who are you thinking the under, I guess, in these live, if you're going live? Yeah, there? I mean, I, I would, I would think you're, you'd be, you'd be hopping in probably to take a, uh, to take a, uh, a, 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 an under, an under live, or you'd be looking to probably lay points because you're probably noticing that there is a, uh, one team out there that actually might be trying and one team out there that is just looking, looking for the, uh, the game to end. Yeah. But yeah, I, w- one thing I'm never looking for to end is the gambling group chat. So hopefully you, me, Sammy P and Will can have a, uh, an extra long gambling group chat coming up next. Our best podcast is back gambling group chat time. NFL uh, kick around the NFC um, division by division with myself, Jeff, Sammy P and Will. Uh, it, it seems like in the NFC, it, it's so hard to just find a, well, it shouldn't say it's hard to find a unique uh, opinion, but it feels like the majority of opinions are, are all like ducks in a row, all the same. Like look around the NFC, it's Eagles are winning the division. Dallas is going to maybe take a step back. The, the commanders could be the sleeper team and the giants stink. So like, it, it feels like all of the action is like, one way in, a, in all these different categories. I mean, like I took the Giants on under five and a half wins at plus money. I took them under six and a half wins. And I, and I mentioned a few weeks back, uh, I, I took them to be the uh, the last remaining winless team in case they uh, do lose to the Vikings. So it, it's clear I don't like the Giants, um, but I couldn't necessarily get behind uh, back in the Eagles to win the division at a short number or, or, or the commanders maybe to go over or make call them uh, – Call them a playoff team. I don't know. I mean, like, like Will, what, what do you think about the uh, the NFC East? Because I just I'm having a hard time finding like a, another bet that I feel really good about. Yeah, it feels like the Giants are dead money. It feels like Washington could be a little bit better, but is that something you really want to, uh, you know, jump in on? I don't. I, I do feel like Dallas is being dismissed a little bit, where everyone just kind of assumes Philly is going to get past their second half struggles. Forgive that playoff game. Hey, it was a tough stretch. Uh, you know, new coordinators. Dallas is taking a step back. I agree with a lot of it. I, I do worry that like Dallas. This is three years in a row they won twelve games. They've been a very good regular season team. So. I, I don't know. Dallas at plus money maybe to win that division uh, is a nice contrarian pick. I haven't made it. I understand the case for Philly. Just in NFC in general, uh, and I'm with you. Giants are terrible. Giants just don't have a quarterback. Skill guys outside of neighbors, offensive line, uh, they are in for a long, long season. I actually like Minnesota week one, and I'm actually tempted to uh, to take Minnesota in uh, in Survivor. But Do you have a buyback if, available if, if, you, if you lose week one? Can you buy back? Um... I think in a couple of them. There's, I'm in a few of them in a couple of my can. So that, that obviously plays into it. But Minnesota is a team I like. Now it has been a tumultuous few weeks, a tumultuous yeah. offseason. But I, if I want to spin it positively, hey, J.J. McCarthy, first of all, we don't know if he's going to be any good. And we don't know when he was going to play. So uh, they signed Stephon Gilmore. And they're just well coached. O'Connell's a good offensive coach. Flores, I mean, I, I know he's been in the news cycle this week. But he is a tough coach defensively. He got blood out of a stone last year. They've got skill guys. They've got a, a back who I think is underrated in Aaron Jones. Good offensive line, good home field. Now, the schedule is tough, but, I mean, you might be able to get in the NFC playoffs at 9-8, and 8-9, 8-8-1, something like that. You're getting almost 2.5 to 1, I think, at plus 230, plus 240 range for Minnesota to be a playoff team. It's and to your point, it's probably not going to be all chalk. You're not going to get the seven teams we all expect. I don't know if Minnesota can just survive their early schedule, Sammy. I think maybe they can sneak into a playoffs and be a little bit of a sleeper. They're probably better with Darnold, let's be real. I mean, McCarthy was going to take time to add that seasoning, and you were going to have to let that you know, simmer for a while for him to be ready to go week to week in the NFL. It's never easy to come in as a quarterback and start right away, let alone in that division, which could be, I mean, we talk about the AFC North. The NFC North could be the best from one to four. So that would have been tough for McCarthy to come in this year. I think they're up, they're better off with with Darnold, as crazy as that might sound. Let me go back to the East for a second. I've talked about my Eagles bet, 7-1 to one to win the NFC. I've got Barkley, 20-1 to one to win the um, Offensive Player of the Year. Um, but look at the playoff market. I know there are some people down on Philly, and I understand it. There's apparently some vitriol between Hertz and Sirianni, but I think what they did defensively in the draft is a big deal. They come out, they draft a corner week one, or uh, in round one, and in round two, they bring in Vic Fangio, who has thrived basically everywhere 
as a coordinator, and in some big markets too, Chicago, San Francisco, Miami, the Eagles to make the playoffs. I know that people don't want to lay minus 250, but it's as high as minus 330 in Vegas. And even if you look in the American markets, DraftKings has minus 250, yes. FanDuel has minus 300, yes. So there's already a 50 cent disparity between American books, let alone, you know, the books in Vegas that are a little bit steeper because Sharps came in and bet Philly. I would be stunned, guys, if they didn't make the playoffs this year. So I know guys are a little squeamish about laying minus 250, especially for a full season bet when they hold your money for six months. But they're going to win 12 games this year or more. They're making the playoffs. And, you know, some of the sharpest people that we all know are not afraid of laying $2, $2.50, $3 if the perceived price is relatively cheap. I, I, if you want it, I was just going to say quickly, if you wanted to hedge that, the minus 250, not that you want to hedge a minus 250. If they don't make the playoffs, Sirianni's on the short list of guys that f- get fired first. So what is he to get fired first? 10, 12, 15 to 1, something like that. So you know, maybe you just throw a, a tenth of the bet on Sirianni, get fired first. Hey, I'm going to probably hit my two minus 250. If I don't, Sirianni's got a good shot to be the first one gone. Can I throw an NFC East prop in your direction? Someone brought this up to me, and I, I'd like do, to, Jeff. to give it to the group. Not, I'm not a Daniel Jones fan. His passing number is 2675.5. That's 157 yards per game. Like Malik Neighbors is gonna be, is gonna provide them some ability to pass the ball. I mean, guys, that gets hurt a lot, though. He just gets a good injury thing. That that would put him 44th in the NFL last season, which is where he was actually last season. Kind of funny. Um, But nonetheless, like that number is so disrespectfully low. They're begging you to do something with it, right? I mean, that you're you're just wagering, I guess, to hope he stays healthy. It's a running quarterback that gets hurt a lot, and they're figuring, hey, one hit, he misses three or four weeks. That number is, I know, one fifty-seven point three. It's a lot. It's it's low. (laughs) Bet it, Jeff. I want bet it. Do it. I, That'll be I, fun getting those I, texts every week from Jeff. Oh my God, he's throwing for 89 yards in the third quarter. This guy stinks. I, 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 I might, I, I might, but I have so much Giants unders like everyone else does. I have under division wins. I have under points. I have under uh, six and a half. Like I have under everything for the Giants. So I, I can't really bet them. Before over, you make that bet, I would say this: Look at what his contract is for next year. Is this one of those deals where if it's the end of the year, they're out of it? Do they sit yes. him to make sure he doesn't get hurt and save the money like a Russell Wilson deal? Because that could be a, a scenario where hey, they're. Uh, whatever, four and 10, four and 11. Hey, we don't want him to get hurt. We don't want to guarantee his money. They said, no, I don't know that that's the case, but, but, you know, consider that when you're betting it. Think, too. I think, I think they're free and clear no matter what after this year. Okay. That was sort of the way the deal was done. And I got to check the injury, injury guarantees on that one. But I thought the number was just surprisingly low. I don't like Daniel Jones. I don't think he's great. He played terribly in the preseason game. Uh, but that number to me just kind of stood out. Speaking of neighbors, Um, these top 10 receivers the last handful of years have been so good against their receiving yardage prop. Now he's got a higher number. It's 875 and a half for the season long number. But here's some of these numbers. I tweeted this out the other day. Jamar Chase year one, 1400 yards. Jalen Waddell over a thousand. Devontae Smith, 916. Garrett Wilson, 1100 yards. Usually these guys that go to bad teams and are the clear cut wide receiver one, they get over this number because they just get fed the ball. There's not much else to throw to. Now, the Dunes is a different too, conversation yeah. in Chicago because you got DJ Moore and you got Keenan Allen, although Allen probably rolls an ankle week five and is off of the year. But usually these guys that go top 10 at receiver soar over these regular season overs in terms of yardage. I don't just like that. I mean, they're going to, and they'll be behind a lot too in these games. I mean, look, Neighbors has had a great camp, play well in the preseason. Uh, there's games where they might be behind 21 points in the third quarter. All they're doing is passing the ball and they're throwing the ball to him. I mean, if he plays 16 or 17 games, he he, he doesn't even need to have like more than 60 yards a game. Yeah. It's a very low number. 875 yards is not a lot given the way that guys pass the ball, like especially Dable. I mean, Dable's going to throw the ball all over the joint. I mean, they're, they're going to run a little bit, but they lose Barkley. You know, they're going to be down, as you guys said. What's their win total? Six, six and a half. Yeah. So they're going to be trailing a lot. As long as he stays healthy, he's going to follow all those talented guys that went in the top 10 last three, four years. I think that's a really decent bet. Minus 110, over 875 and a half. And one another one of those talented young wide receivers from Adunze uh, in Chicago with the Bears. He'll be catching some balls from Caleb Williams. Got uh, DJ Moore is his wide receiver uh, 
mate there along with Keenan Allen. So we'll see uh, how he does. Again, the NFC North, again, common opinion is this is the Lions division. Lions are going to win it. Best team. Uh, favorite, maybe get to the Super Bowl. Not favorite, but a lot of people like him to get to the Super Bowl. A lot of people like Jared Goff, MVP. The Packers will be improved. Packers will be a, the sleeper team in the division, even though they're not a sleeper and they probably should have beaten the 49ers last year in the playoffs. The Bears will be will be on the improve. The, the perception is that the Vikings won't be any good, even though Will laid out, a, uh, I think, a very good case for the Vikings. I actually uh, did bet uh, some of the Vikings uh, – to make the playoffs and, and an alt win total over on them as well. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. But again, I'm, I'm not looking really to get in, involved too heavily uh, on the lions or the Packers or the bears. I thought maybe if we could get a, uh, a win total up high enough and maybe go under uh, that would be the case, but I haven't gotten there yet. Jeff, have you done anything with any of these uh, NFC uh, North teams or players? The NFC North. I haven't done much uh, on the NFC, as you mentioned off the top. I feel like I have a lot stronger taste on on the uh, on the AFC. I had a Vikings to make the playoffs. I feel less inclined about how good that mm-hmm. wager is after the injury to uh, to McCarthy. I thought they were live if if JJ could play most of the year. That's a good football team outside of you know the quarterback situation. Trying to figure that out. They, they got wide, they got a wide receiver. And they got offensive linemen. They got running backs. They got guys that can get after it on defense. Like that feels like a spot where. I felt good about that wager. I don't feel as great about it now, Will. I think you're on that as well. I, I don't feel great about it with Darnold. I mean, look, I I know that we love to hope that players are good when they go to new teams. Darnold's fourth team in like four years or five years, six, whatever it is. He's not good. He's not good. He's not good. So um, I feel like I've got to find a way to get out of this somehow. Uh, I don't know how yet, but I'm, I'm kind of counting this as a, just a, I made a bad wager. Got unlucky. Well, you got a purple shirt on. I thought you'd be a little bit more pro Vikings on this program today. They've done a lot, though. I mean, you look back last 10 years, they've done things with Case Keenum, with Sam Bradford. I know the regimes are different, but I mean, when Pat Shermer was there, he was taking pieces out of the garbage and making it work. I mean, wasn't the Minnesota Miracle game, wasn't that Case Keenum uh, at quarterback? So they've taken these reclamation projects and and made it work. Now, granted, uh, to your point, Jeff, it's not a long-term plan. What's the uh, what's the happy Gilmore line? What's his five year plan? Don't die, you know. Like he's there for one year, and then you go to JJ McCarthy. Big daddy, Big I, daddy look, yes. Big our daddy, Fox yes. teammate, our Fox teammate Tom Brady was asked by Stephen A. Smith the other day, "Who's going to challenge the Chiefs?" And his second answer was Packers. I I couldn't believe he said Green Bay. I don't know that I like him, guys, to go to the Super Bowl, but at minus one fifty to make the playoffs. That seems like a pretty good bet. And again, check your range. FanDuel minus 150. DraftKings minus 155. Caesars minus 180. BetMGM minus 185. Don't be laying 185 in these markets when you can lay 150 at another out. These futures, these playoff markets, these win totals, they are different at basically every shop. And you please, please, please have to consider that you can save yourself 30 to 40 to 50 cents on the same team inside this market. It's crazy that people don't shop around the way that, you know, we always talk about doing. You have to get the best of the number. And especially with basically the NFC South where you where you, you don't know, but you can assume the division's so bad that you're only going to get the division winner in there. The Giants likely are not a playoff team. Uh, the Commanders, I still think they're a little bit shy of a playoff team. So you can eliminate so many teams from playoff contention that that, that I, I think those, those make, it, make or miss playoffs are a, uh, a good way to go. So again, Continuing the theme of the NFC, everybody loves the Falcons in the NFC South to, to win that division. Um, I know the schedule is easy. The schedule was easy last year. They did pick up uh, Matthew Judon and, and, and Simmons now to help help their defense. I don't get what they're doing at the quarterback position or like – with the whole not playing Michael Penix in the preseason, you would think you'd want to get the guy reps in case Kirk Cousins, who has not been uh, a picture of health lately. I mean, with, with the coming off of the Achilles injury, like how, who, who do we know if he can stay healthy? Do we know he can make it back? I don't know. I actually found a, uh, 
under 39, 50 and a half passing yards uh, for Kirk Cousins just before we uh, started recording. And, and I played under on that because I think there are multiple ways that, that I can win that either. A, Cousins is not uh, fully healthy and he underperforms and loses his job or doesn't or, or cedes to, to panics or that the Falcons have this devious plan to get Penix some playing time in there. And that cuts into Cousins' snap count. So uh, I played under Cousins' uh, passing yardage prop. That was um, the only thing that, that I have really found myself to betting uh, w- w- with these miserable teams in this division, Jeff. Well, look, I don't wager on anything Falcons. Just a personal thing. I lose every <laughs> wager in either direction for them, against them. Like, I, I just don't do that. But I will say, guys, I just don't like their process this year. You know, like the idea, so you draft Michael Penix, eighth overall. You trade for a pass rusher. You can't just draft a pass rusher in eighth overall and save yourself, you know, some some money there on, a, on another quarterback that you're paying and also a draft pick that you had to send back for, for, for Judon. And then to not play Michael Penix, in the preseason, essentially, one half were good. I, I don't get the process of this. I don't like wager on teams. Or I don't like the process that they go about building their team. I like I like the additions. Judon Simmons are, are great additions to what was or what was projected to be a bad defense. Uh, Aaron Schatz, oh, DVOA, had this defense entering the season ranked 32nd. He moved them to 29 after these additions. So, like, the defense, guys, is still going to be projected to be really, really bad. That's not often a division winner. They have the 29th ranked defense in the NFL, even in a division that might not be very strong. I think Tampa Bay is not a great team, but a, a quality team, right? Um, I did take Carolina over five and a half wins. I, maybe I'm buying into a little bit too much of being in Charlotte. And, and yeah, Tate you know, Johnson still got on pace to catch 100 balls. Um, 120, you said. 120, yeah. I actually should wager on that. I'm gonna find that. I'm gonna do it just for just for us um, to have to have over his uh, receiver. He did get hurt today though in practice, so oh, maybe great. not. Awesome. Um, oh, <laughs> terrific! Not gonna stop him. I haven't wagered on it yet, but he he uh, he did get hurt today in practice supposedly. I don't know. The the, the Panthers look. Here's the thing about the preseason, which is just difficult. Is like the Panthers have not cared at all about the preseason. Like they just have, the games have been meaningless have been pointless. They haven't played Bryce Young. Dalton, I don't think, has played either game. He didn't play last game. Like, just a waste of anything. And so how do you look at this team at all that can't score a point in the, in, in, in the preseason and sort of think they're going to do well in the regular season? I don't know, Sammy. I think over five and a half. I like the, the coaching staff they have now. I like some of the defense. They do have some weapons on offense that can do something. If Bryce Young just sort of is average with that roster, they'll get to six wins. I think there's a lot of hope tied into what Dave Canales can do with Bryce Young. And, you know, you look back at what he did with Baker Mayfield, Geno Smith, Russell Wilson, his last year in Seattle. He got the most out of all three of those guys, maybe more than any other coordinator has had. And now that's the hope there in Carolina that he can do that with Bryce Young. Um, Sharpest group I know bet over five and over five and a half on Carolina. So you're, you're onto something there. As for Atlanta, organizationally, it feels like they've been at the blackjack table until like three in the morning. And now they're just like, so out of it. They don't know what they're doing. I I thought the quarterback selection was dumb. I thought trading for a guy in Matthew Judon was kind of gambly. Gambly is not a word, but it is now. Damn it. It just feels like they didn't want Belichick there. Cause one of the guys in the front office doesn't like Belichick. Like it just feels like they are on tilt. Um, they have a bunch of talent. But it's hard for me, guys, to go over on Atlanta or bet Atlanta because I had them last year over eight, over eight and a half. (laughs) They went seven and ten and lost six games by one score. And I know that Arthur Smith is gone. But holy crap, like (laughs) they lost games like they lost by by three, by five, by two, by four, by two. They lost nine to seven last year. The Carolina it, it, of all teams. There was it's a way hard to for me. lose a game. The Falcons found it. it it's so hard. I, I know that we should be able to separate last year from this year, and I know the coaching staff is different. But when you had to watch that crap every week and watch them, like, all right, it's a third and goal at the one. Let's let's put the quarterback in the shotgun at the five. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? They were so painful last year, and – I just I can't do it again. Clearly, I'm over. It's it's the NFC version of the Chargers. It, it's the same same team, different city, different league. You, you do, it doesn't matter who the coach is, who the quarterback is, whatever. 
It, it did. You're, it's the organization for whatever reason. This black cloud, this curse hanging over both of these franchises that have uh, perennially uh, not done uh, a heck of a lot. Sorry, Bill, yeah. I kind of lost it there. Just no, bad you're, memories. You're, you know? you're allowed to lose. We, we this like is why I don't wager on the Falcons either. This is I just, everything goes bad when you wager on the Falcons. Any yeah. direction. People are going to say all you need is a little bit better at quarterback from Cousins and he can be the missing piece. Well, sounds a lot like the 2017-2018 Vikings where, where uh, Sammy uh, you know, coincidentally just alluded to them where, hey, they went to the NFC title game. They were 13-3 and with Case Keenum. They were four-point favorites in the NFC title game against the Eagles. Let's sign Cousins. All we need is a little better and we're going to be in the Super Bowl. Well, they went 8-8 eight and eight. the next year. They missed the playoffs. They only made the playoffs a couple times. They won one playoff game. So... I don't know. He's a polarizing player. He's not a terrible player, but when you're starting, when you're counting on Kirk Cousins to do anything positive or be your missing piece, that has historically not gone well for teams. And we'll we'll see indeed if it does. We'll see. We'll see indeed. Will if you're uh, if you are are they are they, are they gonna are they gonna be a uh, a survivor pick week one? Do you think against the Steelers? Atlanta, oh man! I sure as hell couldn't do that. Barf. That's a tough one. But That's I mean, a tough I mean, one. Mor- as we're going to talk about in a little bit here, morale is so low with, with the Steelers and, and how they may be. Like you run there, you're, you're running I, down that plate. I, I think I would stay away from it just because I don't like. The, and I'm down on Pittsburgh too. Trust me, I watched that whole game against the Bills. It's going to be a long year, I think, for Pittsburgh. The matchup though of Pittsburgh's pass rush, uh, pass rush against a 36, 37 year old quarterback and Cousins coming off an Achilles where he hasn't played in preseason, uh, that I worry about. Another quarterback coming off of an injury in Arizona as we move to the NFC West, uh, Kyler Murray. There's some nice prices out there uh, on him to be potentially comeback player of the year, which. He would certainly uh, fit in the new criteria. But the only thing I worry about is he did play a little bit yeah, late last year, so that might negate some of that. But uh, as we mentioned before, someone's got to make the playoffs. C- could it be the Cardinals in around plus a three and a half to one? I hope so, because I bet it. Plus 350. Yeah, let's go, man. Have you seen Marvin Harrison Jr. at camp? Holy, holy, holy. This kid is something else. I mean, and he's doing things on the field that – they haven't had there since Larry Fitz left. Um, somebody floated this to me. I didn't bet it, but I I pondered it. Kyler MVP, 60 to 1. You know, I mean, we've seen these dual threat quarterbacks that like like Lamar Jackson, uh, obviously Mahomes. I think Mahomes' first year, Jeff, was like 35 or 40 to 1. Now, granted, he was a lot younger and, and Mahomes has gone on a different trajectory. But if Kyler could stay on the field, they, they've got some weapons around him now. I think it's an interesting team. Most of you probably won't bet them to make the playoffs. So let me just tell you, I think they're going to win eight or nine games this year. I think that division is very overrated. Um, Matthew Stafford is is on the wrong side of, what, 35 now? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Cooper Cup was banged up last year. Seattle's in a weird transition right now. I, I just think that this is a division. I, I wouldn't be surprised if any of those teams – won that division in the NFC West. Obviously, San Francisco is the cream of the crop. Um, but the win total on uh, on Arizona, seven, seven and a half. I liked the over, and I did bet them to make the playoffs. So, I, actually, sorry, I think the Rams are making the playoffs. And are really? Very, and, 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 I'm actually out on the Rams. I'm curious to hear you on so, this. Well, I'm. I'm. Are, why, why are you out? Are you Are you betting on an injury? Or you think Stafford's going to be hurt? Because otherwise, all they do, all they've done is win a bunch of games each and every year with their head coach and quarterback together. Like I, I don't really. Their offensive line injuries are a concern. Certainly, that's a big concern of mine. But yeah, they lose Donald. They try to replace him with two guys in the draft. But guys, over the years, all they've done together in different variations, whether it's with Goff, whether it's with um, it's Stafford. I know the year they were injured, not not as great, but. 11 wins, 13 wins, 9 wins, 10 wins, 12 wins, 10 wins. Like, they are a, a playoff caliber team each and every year that Stafford stays healthy with McVay. He's an excellent coach. Everyone just, again, the concern of mine is offensive line bear right now because yes. it is super beat up and they're moving guys around because they need to do that. And when you've missed a, a lot of training camp in a new position, that does worry me. Well, and they also lose one of the highest power-rated defensive players in the history of the NFL. I remember sitting in the back at the Westgate with Ed Sammons, and he said, I asked him point blank, I said, who are the two most power-rated players, who are the highest power-rated defensive players of all time? He said, Deion Sanders and Aaron Donald. Losing Aaron Donald's kind of a big deal. 
No I Lawrence don't, Taylor? I don't disagree. You just try to make up the pieces with other guys, right? Not just one guy. You're not going to have an Aaron Donald again, but that's why they went and drafted those young defensive linemen. You try to make it up because, look, D Donald was good, and then who, who else, right? Who else rushed the passer for them? They had guys in the Super Bowl year, but they're sort of missing the other pieces. Now you hope that some of the young players can be those pieces and you don't have to replace Aaron Donald with one guy. You use three or four guys um, in, in his place. I'm with Will. Where's LT? On he had LT, I think, worth two and a half. He had Dion worth three and a half and Donald worth a full three. Wow. Okay. It's a lot for a defensive player. Look, the more you touch the ball, the higher really? your rating is. Like a quarterback, a good quarterback or a great quarterback could be worth six, seven, eight points. Like it's it's also relative to the backup. If Mahomes goes out, that number moves almost a touchdown. Yes. But to give a defensive player two and a half, three, three and a half, it might not sound like a lot, but that is a lot for one guy that doesn't really touch the ball. Will, where are you on the uh, on the Seahawks in this division? I think they'll be good. Uh, McDonald, I mean, you never know when these coordinators become head coaches, and he's certainly, you know, he he's uh, highly thought of, and who knows, maybe he affects the Ravens, leaving them more than he helps the Seahawks. But I think the Seahawks are an over. To me, they're an average team. Uh, are they still at seven and a half? Because to me, they are like the tip. I know there's no 16 game schedule anymore. There's no more eight and eight teams, but to me, they're just like a mediocre, Hey, eight and eight team, 500, some good receivers, some good pieces here and there. Okay. Quarterback. They're just kind of, eh. um, I I've heard people make the case for McDonald coach of the year. I don't buy that one. I'm not going to be betting that one. I just, I don't know that that fits the narrative of like a team with no expectations. Again, what they went eight games last year. What, what are you going to win? 11, 12 to have to, that happen and win the division maybe, but uh, I would lean over. Over. I think they're an average team, and at seven and a half, you know what? Average is good enough to get you over. Anybody else have any Seahawks thoughts? I got, I got, I got nothing on Seahawks. Do you guys. have any Seahawks thoughts? I, 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 I actually, I mean, I'm in the camp. Well, I think they are actually going to be pretty good. I think uh, the way they're the way the schedule opens up, uh, if you're going to play Seattle, you need to play them before the year. I guess they they probably will be two and zero. Oh. Uh, I like McDonald. I think he is certainly a. Uh, strategically i guess plus ev decisions you're probably going to get some some better decisions the game management wise out of him uh than you than you were p carroll made had some odd challenges and some odd decisions in, in play calling at times so is he yeah, gonna I, take I, the I, points you got to take the points in the national football league Bear. that's right you gotta, you gotta take four four forty forty eight yard field goal you got it you got to you got to kick that field goal that's a uh duh. He botched it. Wasn't now that you mention it, wasn't there a long field goal that Pete Carroll and Seattle settled for against the Rams and they lost that game and that kind of swung the playoffs because uh mm -hmm. it, it got the Rams in and that was like mid season where Seattle was on track to get a playoff spot and the Rams weren't and Seattle had some weird sequence at the end of the game where they basically took, you know, were, were running out the clock and settling for a really long field goal. They missed it and that that ended up being the difference. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, it was, but there's some other other markets out there in terms of like if you go back over in, in recent in recent years, uh, so many of the the what you don't see consistency in terms of wide receivers and touchdowns and like wide the if you take like the the wide receivers that, that are the top five in, in touchdown catches from one year to the next, typically they are unders the following year. So the guy, the guys who maybe were in the top five or so in receiving touchdowns a year ago, you might want to look at their uh, their season unders. I don't know what the juice is, but uh, that that that's a note that's in a trend that's been uh, been been passed along. So uh, it kind of it begs the begs the question: of who could potentially be maybe one of these guys on the uh, on the inverse this year? Uh, in the in the NFC, like a, a guy from the NFC who might be worth a play uh, to maybe lead or lead, lead the league in receptions, or maybe to go over their uh, touchdown reception total. Uh, that that if if you are saying that the guys that were, were good last year probably will take a step back, maybe some of these guys who weren't great last year, or or maybe you're sitting on a big year. And any any NFC wide receivers, uh, Sammy, that you have your eye on? Ooh, I saw that fourteen to one on St. Brown in Detroit, and that. Kind of made my meter move a little bit. That's a big number. But also, you asked NFC, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers forever always found his best guy and always found a rhythm with his best guy. And to see that Garrett Wilson number at 11 to 1, I know we're not a Jets podcast yet, um, but that those are the two that I saw 11 to 1 on Wilson. But in the NFC, I would go St. Brown at 14 to 1. 
Wilson to me was the guy I was gonna to pick here. I, I just think that I know again NFC podcast, but that that number to me, um, to Sammy's point, I mean Rogers gets criticized in Green Bay for throwing the ball to his favorite guys too much. That's what he's gonna do. He's gonna force feed Garrett Wilson as much as possible. The other guy maybe is you know Christian Watson at plus two thousand. Does Jordan Love just find him a bunch this season uh, as he gets you know gets more comfortable in in, in the Packers offense second year starter? Um, I think these are very you know. It's kind of tough to hit here, but I think mean, Watson could have a big year if if this offense get you know just kind of starts fast. I'll go Marvin Harrison Jr. Guy Sammy talked about twenty five to one. Um, they are here's the thing about Arizona. They are so bad on defense, and at least they were last year, where you're always having to play catch up. Even the games they win or, or cover whatever, it's a lot of you know thirty five, thirty one, thirty one, twenty eight. He's going to play in good weather in Arizona. He play in good weather, you know Seattle, uh, the Rams, the 49ers, that division. So you be playing catch up a lot. Even if you know what you think the Arizona's going to be pretty good, it, it's hard to picture them being good on defense. You're going to have to keep throwing the ball to keep up. Pretty good quarter. Quarterback in Murray, uh, I think we kind of forget what a special prospect he is because, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, he's just kind of uh, flown under the radar here with everything else going on. Marvin Harrison Jr., 25-1, to 1, I don't think he's bad. But I, I think to, if, we, if we kind of look back at what we've seen uh, in the preseason, I, I think we hit on the first thing a couple, couple of minutes ago, uh, Will, and that, and that was Pittsburgh. Uh, I, I think anybody who saw any of that game the other night, even if you just were looking at the at the box score and seeing eight completions for 47 yards or whatever, or whatever the heck it was for uh, <clears throat> for Russell Russell Wilson, like I couldn't find enough ways to to bet the Steelers under offensive numbers this year, like a point total under lowest scoring team of the of the year season win total under no playoffs like is this is this too much of an overreaction jeff like for what we saw from like one preseason game against the bills defense that actually looked like it was trying i don't think so um again we have this idea that quarterbacks will just turn to something else and go to a different team russell wilson is who he is we've seen enough of wilson those things showed up again against Buffalo. The offense line was not good. I, I grant you that. It wasn't great. You had some offense line injuries, even though Zach Frazier would be the center, even if uh, their, their other center was was healthy. But right tackle's a problem with Jones over there now, with uh, with Fatanu injured. Um, mm -hmm. But the second that Russell Wilson sees any color, so a different jersey in his face, the ball's gone immediately. There's no semblance of any passing game if you get a tiny bit of pressure on Russell Wilson. He's been that way for many years now. His mobility is not what it used to be, so he's not creating plays outside the pocket. The offense just looks really boring when he's in there. And on the flip side, you have Fields, who, who I've said I don't think should be the starter, but he might have to be the starter. He at least provides a little bit of athleticism, a, a little bit of spark and energy and playmaking, but he's the same guy. In this game, he had a guy wide open for a touchdown. Did he hit him? No, he missed him. Like that, you you can't be a winning team and have quarterback play that's not consistent. I know they've done it for so many years now, not so many years, but since Big Ben has has left, where they have pieced it together, they made it. But this is the year it's done. We're we're, we're done piecing it together. It's worn's out now. The 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 running back for a while. The offensive line is beat up and not good. Your quarterbacks aren't great. Very clearly, they need one more wide receiver. They may or may not get. I mean, all these things eventually, guys. Will I'll turn to you? Like all these things eventually are are an under. Like eventually, this all just crumbles to the ground. And they went into the season with Russell Wilson and Justin Fields as their quarterback. At best, in the division, they're third. At best, they're third in the division in quarterback room, probably fourth. You don't win many games having the fourth best quarterback room in a division. Yeah, and they got Russell Wilson for free, and we can debate what we think of Sean Payton, but he's not a complete idiot where, hey, he just gave away Russell Wilson for no reason when I have no quarterback, but here, take Russell Wilson. And Justin Fields, they got for a six-round pick, so look, you get what you pay for, and I'm a believer, you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterback, and they certainly have two quarterbacks. <laughs> and you could say, hey, look in the past, they've won all these games, okay, but let's look at last year. They went 5-1 and one in the division. They swept the Bengals, they swept the Ravens. They saw Browning twice, they didn't see Burrow. They saw Tyler Huntley, one of those Ravens games. Uh, they end up going 5-1, they saw Dorian Thompson Robinson. Uh, they had other games where Watson, remember, turned it over on Monday night. L Lamar and the Ravens gave a game away. So 
again, uh, if you're going to face a schedule where all these teams, their quarterback gets hurt, okay, maybe you'll have a chance. But uh, look, it, it was a weird year last year where you got to play those bad quarterbacks. You got to play Bailey Zappi and Minshew and Garoppolo and Will Levis. It was a weird year. Quarterback play was down all, uh, all around the NFL. Their schedule this year is brutal. And let me just say, they better beat Atlanta or they better beat Denver. If they're 0-2, if they don't start banking wins early, it's going to be ugly. I think they have a top five pick in this year. Uh, top five pick this year. I bet them lowest scoring team, 14-1. to I don't think they're going to have the worst record, but uh, 30 to one to have the worst record. If the Patriots or Panthers, some of these teams are a little better than we think. Can they like get to, can they be a four win team against that brutal schedule with no quarterback play? I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I really don't. They are uh, my favorite bet to go under their wins. And I think they are in for a long, long season. I, I think the, uh, the luck finally runs out here. I like that look on the worst team or like the lowest scoring team or whatever at 14 to one, they're not going to win games with their offense. Uh, last year, they were 11 and six to the under one of the best teams in the NFL in terms of staying under the total. And you look at the total week one, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, 42, <laughs> one of the lowest on the board. Um, they also got Patrick Queen. So, I mean, the defense got better. Ideally, the offense, I think, is going to be just about the same or worse there. They're not winning. They're not going to yeah. be the first to 28. Right. They want to be the first to 17. That's sealer football. I mean, they're they're basically playing Belichick ball. We're going to yeah, punt from our, uh, you know, from our 50, or we're going to punt from your 40. And we're going to, we're going to try and knock the ball out. We're going to try and strip sack you. They're not trying to win shootouts. They're, they're trying to win rock fights in Pittsburgh. So that, that 14 to one is actually really enticing. Yeah, they're not going to score a lot of points. I don't care who the quarterback is. That was enticing. And, and the bet that I actually found more enticing, uh, I'll talk about it, but, but 347 and a half points. Uh, was out there as their season over under Good point one. total at Caesars. This is a team that scored 304 last year. And yes, they had massive quarterback problems this year, but they had massive quarterback problems again this year. They're going over 347 and a half points this year. No, they haven't done that in three years. Forget last year. They haven't done it in three years. Like, Caesars has Wilson passing prop too, right? At like 24, yep. 70 or whatever it is, which look, I, I don't care what the number is. He's not going to play enough games. I mean, I don't even know if he starts week one and if he does and it's not pretty, you're going to see fields at some point. So there weren't that many books posting it and, and they're not posting it for a reason because I don't see how he goes over. Yeah. Li literally, literally. Well, Caesars was the only place that I even saw Wilson uh, props. To, I nothing at DraftKings, nothing at FanDuel. Uh, nothing at MGM, nothing globally in sites that we have access to. Like, so uh, yeah, clearly these books want no, no part of uh, these passing props, but you may, you mentioned about quarterback starting week one. I, I think for a long time, I really just kind of assumed that Jacoby Brissett was going to start week one for the Patriots, but is there a chance that Drake may actually starts week one? And, and if so, like, hey, like you talk about a team that, you have to absolutely downgrade even further. Like they're not winning any games with Drake May quarterback. I, I thought May was live to start uh, fr from the get go here, just because I thought people were taking Mayo at his word, and you know how these coaches go. And I, I just, could, I think you could make a case that they're trying to just create a soft landing for May, where hey, let's say Brissett's the starter no matter what. So if Brissett wins the job in camp, May's not going to look bad. But because if we say hey, it's a quarterback competition, best guy gets the job, and then it's not May, then people are asking why May didn't win the job. And if you believe the reports about what they turned down for May, I mean the reports are the Vikings offered both of their number one picks in last year's draft and next year's one plus other stuff. Stuff. So it's not like they're lukewarm on May. They have to really have some conviction that May's going to be a good player. Otherwise, you would have taken that haul of a of an offer from Minnesota. So I always thought if you love him that much, there's a chance. Why not throw him into the fire week one? I get why not. He's raw. Uh, offensive line issues. I understand all that. But I just think, yeah, in terms of like what you passed up, what you turned down for a trade offer, uh, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not, I'm not going to be shocked at all if he does start week one. Sammy, what are you hearing up there? Anything? God's Olak, who is on 98.5, the sports hub, number one sports station in the country. He's also the uh, color analyst on the radio. He tweeted the other day that he thinks that Drake is very live to start week one. We just don't know because we we have no precedent with Gerard Mayo. Now, Belichick, a few years ago when he was here, I remember he was saying, well, Cam's going to start. Cam's our guy. And then they cut him. Mac Jones ended up starting. So um, I don't know that that means because Belichick did it, Mayo would do it, but – I think Will nailed it there. You don't you don't turn down all these offers for the third overall pick to to rule out starting Drake May, but 
It's going to be a sad ass season here, guys. <laughs> you know, I, I follow a lot of these Patriot guys and the writers and the reporters and all that. And I saw a, a clip last week of one of the beat writers who's just so excited for any shred of talent at receiver. They, they, they got B roll of a receiver catching a ball basically like this and falling to the ground and like, what an amazing catch. I'm like 95% of receivers make that catch. That's how bad it was last year though. When their leading yeah. receiver pop Douglas had like 600 yards, they are starving for offense. They are starving for receiver play. But if you're relying on rookies to be your best receivers, that's a problem. I mean, this, this could be, we talked about this for six months now, this team is going to be so bad offensively, no matter who starts. And now they just lost Matt Judon which will make the linebackers worse and make the secondary worse with a rookie head coach. It's bad math. And I know Patriot fans get all defensive. You guys are going to suck this year. Handle it. Cause you ran the league for 20 years. You're going to suck this year. And definitely not Milton week one, right? We're, we're ruling out Milton. Milton. I thought Milton was going to the hall of fame after that preseason <laughs> game. It's, it's not the worst year to suck, man, because if you, if you have one of those historically bad years, like 2-15 and 15 or so, and you have the number one pick, and you can either know that May is or isn't your guy, and you can take a quarterback at the top of the draft, you have the number one pick in the draft, and you know that there are going to be teams out there that are willing to give up a bounty uh, of, of picks and whatever for to, to be able to pick one of those quarterbacks. So, uh this is a uh, definitely a short-term nightmare of a year, I think, for the Patriots for potentially some uh, long-term game uh, starting maybe in uh, 2026. Well, did you see what Elliot Wolf said the other day about their left tackle who's supposed to start this year? He's like, yeah, if he could block, he'd be a starter. Like, this is your left <laughs> tackle, Jeff. You don't say that about a starting <laughs> left tackle. If he could block, he'd play. Yeah, isn't Trent Brown a little, little beat up too? So like he's gone. Just... I think he's in uh, Cincinnati now, isn't he? Is he in Cincinnati? I, I, I sometimes he's offensive lineman. Yeah, none, none, nonetheless, not. Yeah, he's uh... in the he's in Cincy right now. Right, he is. Okay, he was. I saw he got he was beat up too. Um, they're just it. It's not good. I have Patriots. <laughs> we talked about this last week, right? Like fewest wins, I think plus three twenty. Um. They're just going to be bad. And sometimes you have to be bad to, to be good. You, you need draft picks. And so they traded Judon. I wouldn't be surprised if anyone on their roster was worth trading. They'd trade him at the deadline. They're going to get rid of everybody. We're all going to say, we're all going to say this. We're going to look up week one. It's going to be 14, three Patriots over the Bengals in the second quarter. So. People are going to be sweating their survivors, their teasers, their money line parlays. And we're all going to be like, Oh, we're idiots. We don't know anything about this. Like, I hope so. Usually how it goes. Hey, look, the, the, the Bengals have done a good job the last couple of years of losing games early in the year. So yes, uh, for, for, for survivors sake, I hope that happens again uh, early oh. in the year. Maybe that could be the only win of the year for the uh, long live Patriots. Mike White. Patriots available, Bob, under four and a half plus 110 uh, in DraftKings, too. So mm -hmm. you know, three and a half was a nice price. But, uh, yeah, a lot of options, I think, to uh, to fade the Patriots this year. All right, guys, we'll be back uh, next week. Uh, a little bit more of a, uh, a preview. We'll have the, we have that tweener week before the uh, regular season begins. So uh, look forward to getting back with you next week. All right, back from again with Gucci Chat. Bear, the, the comment about Drake May starting, <laughs> I, I, I didn't expect that to happen this preseason. Um, he looked better in game two than game one. Uh, I'm not sure I'd wager on it yet, but they, you know, teams want their guys to play sooner or later. So he'd be in there much sooner than I think we 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 thought previously. Yeah, I I I'm a little surprised. It was funny because I remember a few weeks back, like um uh, Mayo using like the uh like the pro ready Jacoby Brooks said is the most pro ready quarterback, and like it didn't sound like he was like saying he was definitely the starter, but it, it certainly insinuated that he was leaning towards Brissett at that time. But uh, it will be uh, – boy, if, if Drake May is starting for uh, Patriots, they – I mean, you know you know how, like, in Survivor, like in the past, people were just saying, okay, we're just going to basically bet against the team every week. That's – they may step up and win a game or two here or there. I mean, you, you might need to – tread carefully every now and then, but I, I don't know how they win more than two or three games with, if I don't they think choose, so either. Choose, choose to start that kid at quarterback. But also there's not a lot of playmakers on the team, Barry. Like, that's no, simple. You no, just, like game wreckers, guys that you have to worry about. There's not many on there. Uh, one thing we don't have to worry about though, is giving you best bets. Bear, you well, have- We got to worry about We got to worry about him coming through. 
I have, oh, I feel like I'm going to hit mine. I, I feel comfortable in mine. I hope you feel comfortable in yours. What is your best bet, sir? Uh, you know, we, I kind of alluded to it in the Gamla group chat, and we were kind of going through the Steelers season, like under 347 and a half points for the Steelers this season. Like, I don't, that's 20.45 points per game. Steelers are going to average more than that during the course of the year with quarterback no. problems that they have in the offensive line. Like, the offensive line problems that they have, the, the the Warren injury, and can they find another receiver opposite opposite Pickens? Who like like this this could get could get sideways in Pittsburgh. But even if they do happen to to win some games, they're going to be the ugly games. They're going it's going to be 16-13, yep. Like they want to win that way though. That's the thing, Bear. They want to win that way. They and, want and, to win and that's way. good. You want win that way if you oh, happen. Yeah. If you happen to go go eight and nine, winning those games, you don't make the playoffs, and you're not the lowest scoring team in the league, fine. Just go under three forty seven and a half, and I'm good. Yeah, I, 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 I when you said it, I wagered on it. I, I, I'm with you there. I have some other team unders for for point totals, but um, throw forty five yeah, minutes I, I, in Massachusetts to wave on it, wait, wager on no, it. No, so I did not. It better, uh, better come through. One over, I'm going to take as my best bet. I also have this team over their point total, but I'll go Patrick Mahomes. You're over. Uh, 4350.5 for passing yards. He's been over this number bear uh, every year. He started at least 16 games. You assume me, at least 14 games um, outside of last year. He's just under this number last year. Had terrible wideouts. Maybe I'm drinking the Kool Aid of watching Xavier Worthy against the Lions this past weekend, bear. But kid look good, man. If, if you can get him to stretch the field a little bit more, Patrick Mahomes is going to be back up in that 4800 to 5000 yard uh, mark with just a better wide receiving core brown should be back at some point where she rises year two i don't know if he'll be suspended off this year kelsey <laughs> obviously they have i haven't heard anything end. about that lately no uh i haven't heard anything new uh new tight end they drafted from from tcu like they got weapons um i like mahomes have a bounce back season uh in that 4800 about uh, yards and one thing you always have to worry about with the chiefs is that they, they do rest their starters in week 18 if they have a playoff spot locked up already but hopefully by then uh we have it because look in 16 games he was over 15 games he was over, 17 he was over, 17 he was over, and 16 last year he was not. So uh, giving Mahomes have a much better season offensively. The Chiefs bear could be better this year because they'll be better in offense off a Super Bowl win. Yeah, it, it almost feels like it's like the, so the narrative is just like, oh, it's so hard to win three in a row. They won't win three in a row. And, and, and there we are. We're going to come playoff time again and talking about how oh, they're, 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 they're not going to win three in a row. We're going to be sitting there. In New Orleans, all of us on February 9th, I believe the Super Bowl is. And, and, and oh, by the way, the Chiefs will be in the game against somebody once again. And we'll be talking about how. Hope uh, so. They're, 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 they're going to they're gonna three-peat. So. Maybe Hope a, so. Just eat, eat a bowl of gumbo, watch the Chiefs win a Super Bowl. Just oh, living the dream, man. I'm in. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> but let's, 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 not, let's not get there yet. Let's actually live, enjoy the season, hopefully make some money. Uh, d during the season, you do these shows, have some fun. And uh, we'll. When New Orleans happens, it will happen. But again, appreciate Sammy and Will group chat. Appreciate all of you for uh, downloading wherever you consume your podcasts. For watching on YouTube, uh, we'll be back again next week. We'll, we'll we'll figure we'll figure something else to uh, talk about. We'll, we'll have some more preview preview things and something maybe a uh, an advanced preview of uh, of week one. We got to get our NFL fix in. So again, thanks everybody. Remember rate, review, subscribe. Appreciate the feedback on social media. Remember, less you bet, the more you lose when you win.